Each layer of the sun shield on the Webb telescope works a lot like your umbrella. It's folded up during launch, but when it comes time for the mission, each of the layers unfolds to become the size of a tennis court. But there are features on the layers that make the sun shield look a lot like a big kite in space. To find out more about how this is done, we've come to Huntsville, Alabama. It's known as Rocket City, but it's also home to the Sunshield manufacturer, Mantec Corporation. Hey, so Matt, I was told that you guys here at Mantec put features on the Sunshield that make it look like a kite in space. Yes, we do. There are several things that we add to the sun shield. The first thing we start with is the light line, mm -hmm. which gives the outside shape. Okay, this design here, it runs along the edge of the sun shield? Yes. Okay. Uh, once we go from there, we move into the catenaries. What's a catenary? The, it's a metal strip, basically, mm -hmm. that gives the membrane its three-dimensional shape. Okay. Once we add the catenaries in, we come in and we put the compliant border into uh, the actual capton material itself. It allows the membrane to move and still keep an inner shape that is flat and mirror-like. Oh, okay. And you want that flat, mirror-like surface because? We want it as flat as possible because we reflect more heat that way. Well, this is a pretty cool display, but can we actually see something in action? Yes, we can. So what's going on here, Matt? We're folding up the light line to allow us to place it on the membrane. So this is made out of stainless steel? Yes, this is a stainless steel. It is very light and very mm -hmm. thin. How long a strip is this? This is about 34 feet. And once we put the light line on, we move in to place two mm -hmm. metal catenaries onto the inside of the membrane to give the membrane its shape. So why do you have like three people working on the catenary? We can't afford any kinks or wrinkles in the material because mm -hmm. it does affect the shape of the membrane. So what do we have here? They're going to place the material on top of the compliant border tool so that we can form a vacuum. So it's actually suctioning it? Yeah, it puts a vacuum onto the film and pulls it down into the shape that we're trying to achieve. And this is one of the slowest processes we have. I can imagine, but he's real precise about mm -hmm. it. It takes almost 12 days to do this oh my, around the complete layer? perimeter. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. We have a couple of these. We can show you what it actually does to help the performance of the sun shield. Okay. We'll place this tape down and simulate the catenary's position. Okay. Because basically catenaries are stiffeners, if you will. Exactly. You get any little wrinkle out here. Yeah. We'll call the performance it is degraded. Performance is down a lot. Mm -hmm. And this is just a small surface. I would imagine if you're actually looking at the larger scale sun shield, exactly. you're going to see much more of the yeah, degradation. Yeah, so much more magnified yeah. once you get into the larger scale. You'll recognize a couple of features that you've already seen installed on the membrane, such as the light line, the catenaries, and the compliant borders. We use different shapes in different areas of the membrane. To absorb any kind of deformation that might be happening at the edges. Yes. Or any part of the sun. Any part of the sun shield. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Matt, for showing us what you guys do to the sun shield. All right, thank you. The positioning of these features vary depending upon what layer they're working on, because the five layers differ in shape and size. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Behind the Web.